Hi, my name's Coco. Um, this video is just, it was a long time coming. I've been meaning to film this for a minute and a lot of people have been asking me to. So here it is. Uh, so this video is basically, um, it's gonna be split into three sections. First section is just general tips for high school and how um, to be successful with college applications because that's a whole process. Um, second section is going to be specifically applying to music schools um, and what that process looks like with auditions and whatnot. And then the third section is going to be about applying to music industry programs specifically. Um, so you can just tune out whenever something doesn't apply to you as I get more specific. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm currently a college student. I'm in my first semester um, of college. Um, I go to the University of Miami. Um, I study music industry and media scoring at the Frost School of Music here. Uh, my principal instrument is classical violin. Um, so yeah, so let's just get right into it. I have some notes down here. All right, so um, I'll get into high school. So a huge misconception about high school is that you can't do it all. Meaning, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, you can't, you know, have, you have to sacrifice having a social life for getting good grades and stuff like that. And that's not true. You can do it all. I'm telling you that you can because I did it all. I went to concerts on the weekends and I worked and um, I also had extracurriculars and I had applications and I ended up with a 4.0 GPA finishing high school. So you can do it all, but the trick to doing it all is one, being realistic. You have to be realistic with what you can accomplish and prioritize certain things. So for example, like, uh, if you're in a crap ton of extracurriculars, if you're like, you know, captain of the soccer team and then you also do track and whatever in the spring and you're also on a swim team and you're also in the marching band and you're on mathletes, like, you know, you have to either be okay with being average or, you know, not as good as you want to be at all of those things or like kind of uh, have a conversation with yourself and think about what you want to do and what you have time for and how much time you're willing to put in for everything. So honestly, in my opinion, you can do it all if you also organize your time. If you are organized and you map out your time, you can do everything, you know? So it's all about organization. I don't think you can do anything if you're disorganized. I just don't. Um, so some tips for organization is just one, figuring out how long everything takes. So let's just say you play a musical instrument like me, figuring out how long you typically practice, how much time you need to carve out to practice, figuring out, you know, for each class, how much time roughly you need to study. Obviously it can vary if you have an exam coming up or something like that, but like just on average, like how much time do you think you'll need to study for, you know, this class that also goes with just, you know, talking to upperclassmen and people who have had a certain class before. Um, so you know, you know, what this teacher is like, what their style is like, how much work is involved and stuff like that. Um, so mapping out how much time you need for each class. Um, and also having a social life too. Like maybe you're super extroverted and you wanna hang out with, you know, a friend every day, you know, build that into your schedule, build in time for that um, and stick to it, honestly. Like sticking to, it's, it's easy enough to create a schedule, but stick to it. I mean, in college right now, like I, um, have a schedule here. I have my practice time blocked out. I have my classes and then, you know, I do it day by day and I'll have like, I'll say like, oh, I'm going to eat, you know, at this time and I'm going to go to the gym at this time, wh whatnot. So, um, organize, 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 and you can do everything and you can have a social life. You absolutely can. And you can still be studious and academic and get good grades. It's possible. Um, another thing that helps with being organized is having a planner. Highly, highly recommend having a planner. Um, I tried having planners like online and using like Google Calendar and stuff like that. That didn't work for me. It might work for other people, might work for you. That's great. I prefer like um, 
like paper, like physical planner. That's personally what works for me. I can bring it everywhere. Um, I can visually see everything. Um, and so what helps me um, with my planner, how I mean, like at least how I organize it is I put everything, whether it's personal, schoolwork, work related, every single thing I do goes into my planner. Um, just so that I'm not confused and I don't have to um, flip between different agendas. You know, maybe someone asked me to play a gig um, one day and I'm looking at my academic calendar and, you know, it looks like that time slot is free, but then on my social one I have something going on. Like, keep everything on the same page, on the same planner, on the same sheet. That'll help you so much. Um, and just like, so it's not super like muddy and confusing. You can color code it. Like sometimes I color code it, but that's what I do here. Every single thing goes down, all the homework. I map out how much homework um, I need to do and like what assignments I have for each class. And I just put everything down. And once I finish it, I cross it off. <clears throat> and that's super helpful because, you know, maybe you have an essay or something that's do in like two weeks or something and you don't want to get to that at the moment or you know you're supposed to start something um you can always like for me i can flip back and see if something is uncrossed obviously there's nothing uncrossed here but it's it's nice to see what you haven't done to see like oh this isn't crossed off like i still need to do this that's really helpful for me um, the planner that I use is from this brand called Papier, Papier, I don't know. Um, it's a great brand, at least for me. This is the second planner I've gotten from them. You can customize them. I have my name on the front here. Um, they have, like, a whole page for your schedule, um, and several, like, blank versions, so in case your schedule changes. Tons of uh, pages f just for deadlines. Um, and they have each month set up like this. They have the month and then they have like, um, like goals and like key dates for that month. And then they have everything by week here. So that's what I do. That's how I stay organized and whatnot. So let's move on to the next thing. Yeah, so the next thing on my list is just manage your time and be organized, sticking to a schedule, like I said before, not trying to be redundant. Um, grades aren't everything, also. Um, enjoy yourself. It's it's high school, you know what I mean? Like, everyone says, oh, this is only, you know, I'm not going to say they're the best years of your life, because, like, if, you know, the first couple years of your adolescence is, like, the peak of your life, then that's kind of saying something um but you know it is a unique time in your life and you should enjoy it you know what I mean so um think about it this way like if you have a homework assignment or like a test coming up or something and you have maybe like there's a concert you want to go to or whatever like I guarantee you when you're older like you're not gonna think to yourself man I really wish like I did more homework or I really wish I studied more for that one math test. And you know, like you're not gonna think that. You're gonna think, man, I wish I went to that concert. Man, I wish I went to prom. You know what I mean? That's what you're gonna be thinking. And trust me, like as someone who's out of high school, I never thought to myself like, oh, like I wish I worked harder really, or I wish I got better grades, or I wish that I studied more for this or that. I don't wish that. You know what I mean? So I guarantee you, you're not going to as well. Also because I met my goals like college wise and whatnot. So I, you know, I feel like I'm where I need to be from that perspective. Um, okay. Oh, this is a big one. Okay. Actually do what you're passionate about. So this is relating more to college admissions as we're getting into this. So do extracurriculars that you actually care about. Do an extracurricular that you give a crap about. Why? One, just for your own mental sanity. Don't be driving yourself crazy and doing something you hate, just trying to impress admissions people. Do not sacrifice your mental health 
for an admissions person or for a college application. Just don't. It's not worth it. Um, and also, the thing about doing extracurriculars that you actually enjoy is that because it comes across much better and you're better at it and you can speak more passionately about it because um, you're gonna have to write about a lot of this stuff like a lot of the stuff you're doing in high school and whatever and your degree and stuff you're going to have to write about it and it's gonna be much harder to write about something that you don't care about than something that you really do you know um, and also college admissions, like college, um, uh, like admissions counselors, whatever, they can tell when you don't really care and you're just doing something for your application to a certain extent. Like they can see that. So don't think that, oh, this is more impressive than this. No, like nothing is, art isn't less impressive than doing robotics. Like don't think that way. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Um, second thing is create a resume. Creating a resume from a young, not a young age, but creating it as soon as possible is a very good idea. One, just because you're gonna need a resume in life, so you might as well start now. And also, um, it's a nice supplement to send to colleges because um, for the Common App and stuff like that, I think it's only like 10 extracurriculars, including like awards and other stuff, which for some people is for me was not enough to put on everything that I did. So it's a nice supplement to um, send and, and also just for scholarship applications and stuff like that. Um, oh, this is very um, important about applying to school. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but um, before you pick your schools and before you pick maybe how many and what schools you want to apply to, know your financial situation. Um, it's very important to be on the same page as your parents or whoever is contributing to your education to know um, basically like how many schools you can apply to and what the budget is and stuff like that. It, you know, if your parents are like millionaires and you know your grandpa is paying for your education or whatever then like maybe like don't pay attention to what i'm saying right now but um it's so important to be on the same page as whoever is helping you out with college um because you don't want to go into this process thinking oh i'm gonna apply to this school this school and this school um and then you know find out later that that school is too expensive um, or, you know, have a list of a bunch of schools you want to apply to and then your parents are like, well, you know, I know that there's seven schools on your list, but we want you to apply to four. You know what I mean? It's just important to be on the same page um, about that before you apply. You know, just also just like to be organized and so there's no like bumps in the road or anything. Um, and that kind of brings me to applications. And the thing about applications is start your applications as early as possible um, and map out each application. So um, another thing you do is um, have all of your applications on like a Google document or something like that. Don't just, okay, I cannot stress this enough, but don't just type in um, to like the applications on a school's website where you can apply or whatever. Um, don't do that because one, because they won't always save all the time, that happened to me. Um, and two, sometimes they don't have spell check and stuff like that, so it's just better to have everything, copy down the supplemental questions and all of that onto a Google Doc, have some people proofread it, of course, have people proofread like what you're about to send, maybe your English teacher or whatever. Um, definitely, definitely do that. Um, and. Uh, the horror story that happened with me is um, I'm gonna get into all the colleges I applied to later um, But Drexel was one of the colleges I applied to and I applied to their honors college and their honors college is for any honors college It's a separate application, right? So um, There's like a separate website and separate whole thing so on the application um, I think it was like in one sitting. I just like wrote all the supplementals it was like five essays and I was like all right I'm all done and I think I switched over to another tab for a second um and then I switched back to go and apply and all my work was deleted and I didn't end up applying 
to Drexel's Honors College because I was like, I wrote all of that and it's all gone. Like, I'm, I'm just not doing that again, you know? So that's why it's so important <laughs> to have write all of your essays on a Google Doc or something else and then transfer them. Do not write it in the website and in the application. Don't do that, <laughs> okay. Um, another way to stay organized in choosing your college and stuff like that um, is um, having a spreadsheet um, where you have each college on there, maybe have the acceptance rate or, you know, um, the likelihood of you getting in, you know, maybe the range of SAT, maybe like what programs they offer that you're interested in, stuff like that, just so you can compare easily. Um, I feel like that's, that's super helpful. Um, okay, so now about writing supplements for um, college. Try to have your personal essay um, written as soon as possible, I would say. I wrote my personal essay, like I started drafting it like June or, yeah, like June of um, junior year. Um, and then I had it pretty perfected by like August, September-ish. I know this video is going to come out a bit later um you know for the seniors but start it start your applications in the summer honestly especially if um you're applying to a specialized program where you need more than just the common app if you need a portfolio auditions stuff like that get all the essays and like all the academic stuff out of the way first trust me you really really want to do that um and for your personal essay um make sure it is about you right so uh of course, some colleges have interviews and stuff like that, but your essay is your time to tell admissions people who you are exactly, essentially, in an essay. You need to convey who you are through your writing. Um, so the best way to do that is to write about you and just be authentic. And don't write about someone else. Do not, do not do this. Like. I, there's been so many occasions where some people I know have written about someone else. Maybe their aunt had cancer or something like that, and they wrote their whole essay about that. And it's like, okay, that's I'm so sorry that happened, but you know, an admissions officer is gonna read that and say like that sucks. But like, I know absolutely nothing about this applicant though. You want the admissions person reading your um, essay to immediately. Um, like connect certain traits to you and see you and have an idea of who you are and not someone else so don't it's okay to mention other people in your essay i did too but it should be about you like this is your time to talk about you and show who you are so definitely um definitely do that um another thing with college supplements like for certain majors and stuff, you have to do supplemental essays. Be as specific as possible. Oh, this is just also in general. Be specific. Do not assume that admissions people know anything about you. And also, even if something is in your common app, like activity or whatever, like don't assume that the same person is that's reading your um, resume is reading your essay because there's a bunch of different admissions people that read different and go over different things so restate certain things that are important don't assume that they're going to remember something or whatnot don't ever assume be as specific as possible it also just adds color and um you know depth to your writing too if you you know are writing about perseverance and stuff like that and how you worked in a restaurant um don't just say like oh i worked in a restaurant and during high school and it was like really difficult and it gave me the trait of perseverance. Say, like, you have to be specific. You have to say, like, I worked in a Spanish fusion restaurant doing this job specifically, encountering these obstacles, which then, you know, gave me these traits. And always connect everything back to, um, marketable traits that you have because essentially you're marketing yourself and you're advertising yourself to schools you have to sell yourself right so don't just um throw something out there essentially 
like you want to connect that to why you are a good fit for this school and why you deserve to go there, right? So don't just say like, oh, I did orchestra without high school, throughout high school, whatever, and it was fun. Connect that a bit. Say like, you know, I did orchestra without, you know, throughout high school or whatever, and um, this experience gave me traits of leadership, blah, 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 which makes me confident in pursuing a higher education. Oops. like. Oh, that was my plan. I don't know. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so things like that, like you want to be specific and you want to connect like all of your writing and every point you make to why you specifically are a good fit for that school and what traits and stuff and what skills did something give you specifically, if that makes sense. Okay. And you also want to explain your future and what you can do with your degree and how you can contribute to that college because um, of course you want to express uh, in a college essay that, oh, I really, really want to go to this school. That's important, but what's equally as important is saying, this is what I'm going to do after I graduate and this is how I'm going to contribute to the school. That's very important, right? Because I'm sure schools like Harvard, everyone that's applying there really, really wants to go there. But like, you know, at the end of the day to get in, you have to have the other perspective and say, you know, I want to go here and, you know, this is what I'm going to offer you. And, you know, in turn, when I graduate, um, this is what I will be able to do with my degree from wherever. Um, and ex like explain your future, right? So you always want to be looking beyond just college, right? Because at the end of the day, when you graduate, like, that's it, college is done. Like you're in the real world and you need a job. So you need to have in your writing um, some sort of, it's okay, you don't have to know exactly what you wanna do, but you have to like recognize somehow that um, you're gonna have to like take that leap after college and have something, um, essentially, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's see um personal essay has to be personal yes and oh they want to see perseverance so yeah so have a lot of themes of perseverance stuff like that in your essay right you want to have um talk about an obstacle you overcame something like that this is your time to get personal you, you know what i mean if there's like something dark and spooky that happened in your life that like changed the course of you know, who you are and the core of your being, talk about that. You know what I mean? Um, and you can be creative about it too. I'm not going to read my personal essay or any of my essays because I'm worried about plagiarism. I'm not gonna lie. But um, I basically wrote about different themes of um, myself and traits and stuff like that. And perseverance and stuff was linked into that and that's very important colleges want to see that right because it's not enough to be academically um good essentially you know because there's so many people applying who have a great SAT score and have a great GPA so they, they can't admit all of them you have to you know also have that personal aspect of um Essentially, like colleges are a business at the end of the day, right? So they want to make sure that the people that they're admitting, of course, are, you know, academically equipped for, you know, their institution, but also um, are mentally able to um, finish um, and graduate, right? Because colleges don't want to lose money and have people not graduate. So, you know, being you know academically adept is very important but you also have to have that personal and that mental aspect of being able to convey that you are essentially mentally okay um because um colleges won't admit someone if you know just think about it like why would a college admit someone if they don't if they're not confident in them finishing their degree you know what i mean um it is about stats in that kind of sense like they don't want their um like retention rate and graduation rate 
to lower. So it's very important um, that you um, convey that you're, you know, mentally well, um, in a sense, and mentally capable of, you know, going through changes and, you know, being placed in uncomfortable situations and persevering. That's why that's very important. Okay, um, let's see. So more into high school, whatnot, GPA slash ranking. Um, I would say with GPA, it matters to a certain extent. Don't have that be the one thing you focus on because you have to be more well-rounded and that itself is not going to get you in somewhere. Your GPA alone is not going to get you in anywhere. It's just, it just won't. Um, it's, well, for competitive colleges, that's what I'm referring to. Um, just having a good SAT score alone won't. If you're not a well-rounded individual, if you don't do any activities or whatever, that's not really gonna do much for you. So, um, don't like drive yourself crazy with your GPA. Um, I would say, you know, definitely challenge yourself with your courses and stuff like that, but don't drive yourself crazy. Uh, if you want to go to a very selective college, you're gonna have to take, I would say, the AP or the honors version of courses. And also, I highly recommend that because um, they're weighted, right? So with AP courses, like, of course, like you can take the AP test. You don't have to though, but um, that course is weighted. So if you do fairly well in it, you can do like, um, not as well in an AP or honors course than like a regular academic one and um, because of that weight it'll kind of like balance out and be essentially the same and still boost your GPA so I would say take as many challenges course challenging courses as possible um, and take some in your interest too um, unfortunately I didn't follow that rule too much um, because a lot of the courses that I wanted to take were arts courses and they didn't um, really fit into my schedule that much. Um, another important thing is to um, make sure you don't have to excel. This goes back to GPA and grades. You don't have to excel at every single class, but make sure like if you, this is if you know what you want to major in and what field you want to study, make sure that the classes that you are taking within that field that your grades are impeccable or not impeccable but really good in that category right so if you're going into stem right make sure that your grades in your stem classes are really strong right it's okay to like have a b or whatever like or maybe even like a c i don't know about a c but you know what i mean like it's it's okay to like falter a little bit in english or arts if you're going into stem because they're really going to be looking at are you excelling in these courses that are relative towards your major right like i am a music industry and media scoring major right so double major actually so um i didn't do as well in my stem classes as i did in my more humanities and like English and arts and music courses but you know I'm not majoring in chemistry so it didn't matter that that was like a bad grade you know what I mean like colleges are willing to overlook certain grades in a sense if you know one if you put in effort you know what I mean obviously if you fail the course then you fail the course and that's no good um and if they're not really relevant to your major because um, yes, you will have to take like supplemental like core classes in college and stuff like that, but most of the classes you are taking are specifically for your major. So that's, that's why that is important. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, submitting your application is just the first step. Okay. This is very important for competitive colleges. I'm going to repeat what I just said because it's so important. Submitting, just submitting an application is not enough. That is just the first step. That is just the beginning. Um, after you submit your application, do an interview, do a tour, 
um, talk to alumni, um, you know, email a professor. You want to have the most amount of people as possible know your name um, and have a connection to the person, to the application, right? Because applications are essentially a screen, it's a resume, it's a piece of paper, whatever right if they can put a face to a name or an email or just remember oh this person this kid like i had a zoom call with them and you know they you know ask questions about this program or whatever that's will give you more of an edge than someone with the same um statistics and like uh caliber as you and same application as you who didn't do that who didn't take that extra step and it might seem like you know just like submitting your resume or whatever is like a small step or whatever but it is very important um and i would say it puts you over the top um for a competitive school if that's what you're looking for um uh, okay so uh letters of recommendation so for letters of recommendation um try to give your teachers as much as time as much time as possible to write them, right? Because chances are like your teachers are probably going to have to write a lot of um, recommendation letters for a lot of people. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of first in line and that you're not scrambling last minute with that. So just make sure that's all organized um, and choose a teacher, one that you've either had for a really long time and can really vouch for you um, or, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a teacher you've had for a long time, but a teacher, um, it could, doesn't even have to be um, a teacher. It could be just as long as it's not really like a family member, because that's little, you know. Um, just someone, maybe like um, a muse, maybe your private lesson teacher or whatever, um, who can really, um, who really knows you and can really um, write about you in a really positive way. And um, so I believe it's one or some colleges take one to three um, letters of rec and um, some of them have to only be from teachers at your school because uh, I had my superintendent at my school write me a letter of a recommendation um, but because he's not like a teacher um, I had to submit that as a supplemental thing and I just emailed that to admissions or whatever. Um, and for certain degrees and stuff like that, at least for music, they ask for a private teacher to, um, you know, write a re letter of recommendation or something or be a reference for you for that. Um, okay, let's see what else. Colleges look for leadership is another big thing. Try to tie just as perseverance you want to tie in you want to tie in leadership as much as possible um oh this is very important map out your deadlines for each application and do them accordingly right so that's like i said back with the whole spreadsheet and stuff like that you want to have each deadline um and like you want to do your applications in chronological order so that one it's just organized and two you're not doing an application due in two months and then um you know then scrambling to do one that's like due in two weeks you know what i mean you want to make sure you're on track and organized and it just it just makes sense to do it that way um also for a lot of your essays and stuff like that don't rewrite every single like essay for every school so like let's just say if a lot of schools have a statement of purpose especially for certain degrees like why do you want this degree blah blah blah, blah. don't write a different one for each one if the questions for schools are like generally the same because a lot of the time they are don't write it a completely new essay you can tweak certain things you know what i mean that's what i did like i had a whole essay about like you know you sometimes you have to have like essays like explaining your resume or just like explaining why you want to pursue pursue this certain degree um for those essays i kept it the same and then at the end changed a little like that's why i want to go to blank school you know what i mean like um you don't you don't have to rewrite everything so just be smart about that too um all right let's see so this has to do with extracurricular so colleges need to see a spike 
and not a million extracurriculars. So a spike is essentially an extracurricular activity that you're really, really good at, that you excel in. It's okay to like have a couple um, activities that you're average at, but you really want to have one that you're super strong in um, to stand out, you know, um, and also just have something to write about too. I think that's important. Um, another thing, uh, this is just very important in general, but also for application time. It's okay to detox from social media and take a break. This is a lot of work, you know what I mean? Um, and it's really stressful because during applications, like, you're also in your senior year, so there's pressure to have fun, and there's, like, pressure to also maintain your grades and also, you know, apply to colleges. There's so much going on. Um, so it's okay to detox from social media. Just take a step back um, and focus. I, I promise you it'll help you a lot. Um, if you just like delete Instagram for like a week or something and get an application done, um, you'll feel much better. Um, okay, so I think that's all I want to talk about college wise or um, high school wise. So, oh, actually, no, sorry, there's one more thing, summer programs. Um, someone asked me about like what summer programs I did and stuff like that. Um, you can include summer programs on your application and stuff like that, but if you do summer programs at a certain college, it one, won't guarantee that you'll get in, and two, um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's affiliated with the school. So for me, I did JSA, which is uh, Junior State of America. I did two JSA institutions. I did leadership and politics, and I did women's leadership. So the first one was at Princeton University, and the second one was held at Barnard, which is the Women's College of Columbia in Georgetown. Um, those are good schools, but this program was not affiliated with the university. We just studied on their campus. You know what I mean? So, um, it, and if you also do programs, like some schools have summer schools and stuff like that, um, it won't guarantee you getting in per se, honestly. Um, but they're helpful to do and they're good to put on your, um, transcript or resume or whatever, but I, I don't think it'll like, make you get in oh sat i can't believe i forgot about sat okay sorry <laughs> another tangent about sat okay sat is i would say fairly important obviously sat and gpa like not every extracurriculars like there's not one thing that's going to get you into a school it's having all of these things so just having one really awesome extracurricular isn't going to get you into a school you know, being, you know, the valedictorian and there's nothing else to you isn't going to get you uh, into a, a competitive school. It's, it's a accumulation of, of all of these different attributes together, right? And SAT is one of those things. It's not the most important. None of these are the most important, but it is um, important. So figure out what works better for you, SAT or ACT. Uh, I don't really know the difference, honestly. I took the SAT. You want to map out how much time um, you, what uh, dates you want to take for the SAT. And I would say try to have the score you want um, before senior year. You don't want to be, you do not want to be taking the SAT senior year. You do not want to be doing that. So um, they have, sometimes they have them every month or every couple of months. Plan on taking the SAT three times just just do it because um you want to make sure like maybe the first time i know a friend of mine um studied really hard for the sat and i think it was like the first or second time she took it um i think she skipped a question on accident and then all of her other answers were off by one and so she couldn't use like that score you know what i mean stuff like that can happen um so you want to make sure that you have at least three times, you know, to take the SAT carved out before you start your senior year because, you know, maybe best case scenario, 
you take it your first time and you know you get the score you want and that's awesome um, but plan on taking it three times so that you're not scrambling this is not a test that you want to scramble for it just it just isn't um, okay so taking it three times um, you don't need a tutor for the SAT it, it's that's expensive and um, you don't need one for uh, me I took the SAT twice um, first time I took it I did a fair amount of prep I used Khan Academy which is very helpful but that alone um, won't necessarily like I don't think Khan Academy alone will you know get you where exactly where you want to be um, but it's super helpful um, so I just did a little bit of Khan Academy for like two weeks or something um, and I, the first time I took it, I got a 1280. wasn't really happy with that. And the second time I studied more, I used Khan Academy and I got one of the Barron's books, uh, like SAT prep books, and I got a 1400 and I didn't want to take it. I wanted to take it another time, but um, it was like August or something when I took it. And mind you, when you get, you have to also consider that it might take a month or longer to get your scores back. So just because you take, you know, um, especially like if you're a senior and you're planning to take it in October or something like that, and you're applying early action, which the deadline for early action is typically like November 1st, you may not get your score in time. Um, so just keep that in mind, like also f factor in um, the fact that it might take a month to get your score back. Um, so second time I took a, I think I said I got a 1400. Um, use that to apply everywhere um and i found for me the best combination was doing um using khan academy and using the baron's book which is like um it's like 30 dollars or something like that totally worth it they have lessons on how to do everything they have written tests khan academy has practice tests too but like, it's just, it's important to do it on paper just so you get acclimated to that, you know what I mean? Um, the Barron's book has, you know, um, a whole vocabulary and stuff like that. Um, and then half of everything else is practice tests. So do half like preparing and half practice tests because half of it is just like learning how to take the test basically. Um, and some people went um, really in depth and had a book of mistakes um, where like maybe there's a certain problem that you always trip up on or something like that um, writing that down like um, like having a book where you have each problem that maybe like you go through all your practice tests and you see what um, answers you got wrong and you um, like write down the question write down the answer that you put down, write down the correct one, explanation of how it's correct. Like a book of mistakes is helpful um, and you can just flip through and see like what do you always miss before you take the next practice test, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let me see before I move out of high school, if there's anything else I want to say. Oh, I'm going to get into, now I'll get into the colleges I applied to and specifically what I did for each one. Okay, <laughs> so also a general college tip, or not college tip, life tip, like high school tip, just be nice to everyone. Uh, it doesn't cost anything and it's not any more, it's more energy to be mean pe to be mean to people than to be nice to people. So just be nice to people in high school. Okay, um, all right. But like you knew that because everyone knows that. Okay, um, okay, now getting into the colleges that I applied to, um, if you don't care about this, then just skip or tune out, I don't know. Okay, so I applied to nine colleges, I believe. I applied to, obviously, U Miami. Um, for music industry, I applied U Miami, Drexel, Syracuse, USC, uh, UCLA, and Northeastern. And then I applied to Temple, uh, Smith, um, oh my gosh, there's another one too. Oh, and Penn State and the Honors College of Penn State. Okay, 
So, uh, the only college I didn't get into was UCLA, and I got waitlisted from Smith. So, and for music industry, I didn't get my first choice major for Syracuse, I got my second choice major. So I didn't get into their music industry program, but I got into, um, like, my second choice major. And I know why, so keep, like, tuning in if you want to know why. Okay, so I'll start off with just, like, the state schools. So for Temple, I got in, and I got a scholarship for pretty much, like, most of the schools I got into. Um, Temple, I think I applied, like, inter they didn't have a music industry degree. The closest thing they had was, like, entertainment management, which wasn't really what I wanted to do. And it was in their, like, sports and hospitality management school. So if you're looking for a bargain school um, and you want to do music industry, unfortunately, Temple doesn't, I mean, at least not yet, I guess, doesn't have a program for that. So keep that in mind. Um, I got into Temple and I got placed into their, their honors college. I didn't really do much for that application outside of just applying. But then again, it is, it's become more selective, but it's not, um, it, it's, it's not like as selective as like a lot of other schools. So I wouldn't necessarily think that you have to go above and beyond for that application. Uh, for Penn State, I just applied. Um, and then for Schreier's Honors College, I didn't get into their Honors College. Um, you have to do a crap load of essays. Um, so I did that. And then you have to do an interview, which I did. Um, got into Penn State. I think, what was my major? I think it was like philosophy or something. Um, because they don't have a music industry program as well, but it was just like more of a safety for me. Um, got in there, whatever. I didn't, I didn't really do anything for that application besides just apply. Um, same with North, Northeastern, honestly, like you have to do a, a portfolio for music industry. Um, uh, but that's it. I didn't, I kind of, I was, I honestly applied to too many, not too many schools, but like, um, as I was applying to schools, I was also researching the schools and like figuring out like which ones I liked and which ones I would want to go to like after I applied. Um, and that wasn't really, that kind of like moved to the lower end of my list. So I didn't really like um, try, <laughs> not, not, not to say I didn't try, but like I didn't, you know, um, really go above and beyond for the application. I just applied to that one. Oh, this is also important. Um, make sure when you're applying that you know that there's different deadlines for scholarships to be considered for scholarships for different colleges, right? So maybe for some colleges, they have a regular decision uh, deadline. But if you want to be considered for scholarships, you have to apply early action for some colleges. So just also really, really like keep that in mind. That's very, very um, important. Um, when you're map mapping everything out, if you're a person who needs a scholarship to go to school, that's important. Okay. Um, also, Northeastern doesn't give out scholarships, so that's another thing. So, those three schools. For Smith, I applied and um, I submitted my SAT score for all the schools I applied to. Same with my AP scores. So, for my AP scores, um, I got a three on AP US history, which I did not use. Um, I got a four on music theory, US history, um, uh, environmental science and language. And I use those. Um, okay, just for context. Um, what's the other school? I think the rest are music or er, yeah, so for Smith, I just applied, and I also, um, uh, they, for some colleges, you can do an instrumental or, like, supplemental arts portfolio, so I did an instrumental portfolio for them, um, and then I got waitlisted from Smith, but honestly, um, I didn't really work that application that much, um, which I think is, like, why, because, like, a lot of the other colleges I got into had like uh, a way lower acceptance rate than Smith's was. 
Um, so I was like, why did I get in there and not there? I think it's because um, I didn't really express as much interest as I did for other colleges. And another way to express interest is like, meet the representatives when they come to your school, when you have, you know, some college like admissions representative coming to your school, um, make sure you meet them, make sure you go to those meetings and stuff like that. Um, not only so they can, you know, see you, but also so you can figure out if this is a really good fit for you as well and you can ask questions with someone who knows everything about, you know, the place that you're considering. Okay, so Smith, that happened, whatever. They don't really have a music school, um, they have an orchestra, stuff like that, um, but they don't have, like, I maybe they have a general music major, I think, but they don't have a music industry program. I think I did, like, individualized degree or, like, philosophy or something for that. Um, anyways, next college, um, UCLA, um, they have a music industry program, part of their music school. Um, their whole process is a little rigorous, so you have to submit an application, obviously, uh, to the school, but keep in mind that because it is a UC school, it's a different application, so if you're, if there's some UC schools on your list, um, keep in mind they don't use the common app, they use a different one, so it's a bit more work, um, and then there's a supplemental application for uh, their music industry program and then um, they do rounds of interviews and stuff like that so uh, I was kind of stupid with this application because when I was making my portfolio for some reason like I had pre-screen videos that I used for music school um, the music school that I'm at right now <laughs> and um, I was like oh my pre-screens are so bad like I'm, I can't submit this to UCLA like when I literally submitted them everywhere else, but anyways, I was like, I can't submit them to UCLA, so I left out that part of my resume, and I didn't submit my performance videos into my application for UCLA, which was, like, really stupid, honestly. Ah, don't do that. Don't think, like, oh, this is so bad, or, you know, especially if you're, um, submitting that to other schools already, like, what? Like, that's... I, I wish what that's crazy I don't know if I would have like gotten in if I sub had I submitted those videos but it's just important to like include everything you know what I mean like if there's a blunder in there there's a blunder in there you know what I mean like who cares like you probably have a bunch of other cool stuff that will that'll overlook that you know what I mean so whatever <laughs> that's that and I didn't even make it for the first uh, round of interviews like they you know they're just like oh like you're done basically which is like that was one of the first decisions I got and it was like soul crushing I was like oh my god um but then the best is yet to come because I got into all the other ones okay next one Syracuse so Syracuse um their music industry degree isn't called music industry it's called like the bandier program which I think is like entertainment something um, but it's essentially a music industry degree. Um, I toured the camp. I went on an official campus tour. Um, and oof, this was really stupid. <laughs> when applying to Syracuse, um, they don't have, just like Drexel, for their music industry program, they don't have a separate application for it. Um, you just apply to the school and then you pick that major. But that will not, for music industry, which is one of the most competitive degree programs to get into, that will not, just applying to a college will not get you in. You have to submit your resume and supplemental stuff, which I did not do for Syracuse, which is why I didn't get into that program, despite getting into like all the other music industry programs. I did not get into Syracuse's Bandier program because I just applied and that was that I didn't even say I literally just dropped the ball on the application because I honestly forgot I applied there um I didn't submit my res like I emailed my resume to other schools and stuff I didn't email my resume at all to Syracuse I just applied and like took a campus tour like over the summer or whatever that's not enough 
<laughs> how are they supposed to know what's on my resume and you know what my portfolio looks like if I don't send it to them they're just they're not gonna know you know so yeah <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on to USC, University of Southern California. So for USC Thornton, their music industry program, um, it's a lot of supplementals. You have to do essays and you have to do videos of like, you know, answering questions and stuff like that. Um, got into that program, but the thing you need to know about um, USC music industry is that um, the way that their music school is structured is that um, the courses and the schedule is very specific for all the music majors. So the only so they all start in the fall, but the only major that can also that can like start in the fall and spring is music industry. So there's a very very high chance, not a very high chance, but it's it's fairly common for music industry majors at USC to be placed into the spring semester. I was placed into the spring semester and um, I talked with a lot of um, people who got admitted into that program as well on social media and most of them were also admitted into the spring semester. Not all of them, but most of them were. Um, so just keep that in mind with that. Not that it'll happen to you, it's probably just like the roll of the dice or whatever. Um, but it, it's that is possible um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing um, just depends on what your preference is so for USC um, I was really interested at, in this college for a while um, so since like sophomore year whenever we would have representatives come to my school I would always go to those meetings um, and stuff like that and meet the like admissions people um, that's one thing I did outside of just applying. I'm trying to think of what else I did. Oop. Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I did outside of just applying. Uh, I think that's it, honestly. Um, but their application is so beefy. Like, there's so, there's so much to it that, like, um, I don't, I mean, it obviously would help to reach out. Um, and, so, and stuff like that, but um, they already get a lot. It's, it's not like you're, you have to send like extra stuff like other schools where they, where they don't um, require portfolio. Like there's a lot already in there, really. Um, so yeah, that was USC. And then, what was the other one? Drexel. Yeah, Drexel's music industry program. Um, this is another one where they don't require a, um, uh, portfolio but you need to submit one to get in like I um, took a tour of the campus specifically Westfall which is the college where they have like the music industry program and like a lot of other like arts majors and stuff like that um, met like the program director and stuff like that uh, I applied and then I sent in to the pr director of the program um, like my portfolio and stuff like that and then in the email I was like oh I was blah 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 that visited the school I toured last whatever I've green hair just you know don't remember blah 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 here's my portfolio I'm interested in this program whatever um and then I got into that program and that's the same level of difficulty as the bandier program at Syracuse to get into but you want to know why I got into Drexel's and I didn't get into Syracuse's? Because I submitted supplemental stuff. I did campus tours at both. But one of them, I submitted supplemental uh, portfolios and stuff like that. And the other one, I didn't. So that's... Cannot stress that enough. Okay. <laughs> now, for the college that I'm at right now that I really love. University of Miami, Frost School of Music. So... One thing to keep in mind for the Frost School is that for every single major within the music school, you have to, one, be an instrumentalist, like play an instrument or sing, um, and audition, and be at a performance uh, like level um, kind of audition, right? So you're, you're kind of treated as if you're a performance major applying to the school, right? So um, the way to apply to this school uh, obviously did Common App, 
Um, then there's a supplemental frost application where you have to have pre-screen videos. I'll get into applying for music school in a separate video or whatever. Um, Cause this video is already really long. So I'll just do that. I'll just do like a couple separate ones. Um, right. So frost music school. Um, sorry. It's like 11 PM right now. And I'm like, been talking for an hour like losing my mind okay so the supplemental application you have to do like an essay and you know pre-screen videos and then if you get selected past the pre-screen round then you audition in person so keep in mind that if you apply for the school or if you apply to a school that has live auditions you're gonna need to like travel there and go there in person so then I did that got into that program um I didn't really do um I'm trying to think of like ways I networked kind of um I applied early action but keep in mind when you apply early action there's only one early action live audition date that's the date that's it um and it turns out when I applied that and I got like selected to audition in person um, I couldn't make the in-person date because I was literally um, on like a school trip like out of state um, so I was like freaking out I was like oh my god you know like I applied and you know you know um, I can't make this one date like what am I gonna do so I reached out to some of the admissions people on LinkedIn LinkedIn is also important get LinkedIn make a profile connect with people um, anyways um, connected with, um, I connected with uh, one of the admissions people on LinkedIn and I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I really want to go to the school and I want to audition, but, um, you know, I can't make this day and they made it work and they said, you know, just, you know, but I was like, I applied early action just because I need to be considered for scholarships, but you know, that's why I didn't do regular with the regular dates. And they were like, oh, just defer to regular decision and pick one of the regular decision dates and come in and that won't be a problem because you applied early blah 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 so long story short I um was regular I switched to regular and um picked one of the regular decision dates stuff like that so yeah um didn't do anything else really outside of that besides live auditioning obviously and then you want to talk to when you're auditioning in person like I'll go more into this um with my uh like audition or whatever video like you want to make sure that um you talk to as much people as possible um like people in administration and stuff like some majors had to do an in-person interview I for my major I didn't have to but um, I was like really confused, I thought I did. So I went up to like one of the deans and I started talking to them and I was like, do I have to do like an interview or whatever? They're like, no, would you like to do one? And I was like, actually, yes. And I just started talking to them, you know? So stuff like that, you know, just helps. So yeah, um, also I'll put my transcript at the end of this video in case you're interested in the courses that I took and the grades that I got. Um, that means something to you. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it was helpful. I know it's a long video, but it is what it is. Um, it's not really much else for me to say. Um, make sure when you're applying, you actually choose a major you care about and that you're interested in. You know, it doesn't have to be the best thing in the world, but like make sure you're interested about it, right? Because you have to write about um, your major and why you want to pursue this um area of interest you know and like i said before it's going to be much easier to write about stuff you give a crap about and stuff that you don't so um yeah that's that um this is your time to be bold you know choose something that interests you that you really want to pursue take a leap you know i'm taking a leap right now doing music but i love it so it's fine and I'll figure it out you know what I mean so just do something that interests you um and I don't really have anything else to say besides that um so yeah if you stayed till the end that's cool um I hope this was helpful 
Uh, you can reach out to me on my social media. I'll put it here or something. I'll put my LinkedIn and other s stuff like my Instagram if you want to connect or something. Um, so yeah, that's that. All right. <laughs>